It was bring your kid to work day today. Jokes on you guys, I brought all three of my kids. <laughs> With its updated design offering support for large GPUs, the all-new H1 from NZXT brings big performance to small form factor gaming. The new H1 features larger ventilation for improved cooling and a new exhaust fan to increase air exchange efficiency, helping it to keep even the most demanding components cool. Taking the guesswork out of parts compatibility, the new H1 features a pre-installed fan controller, 750 watt power supply, Gen 4 PCIe riser cable, integrated AIO cooler, and pre-routed cables. To see the full list of features of the all-new H1 from NZXT, Follow the link in the description below. Okay, it's another build incoming, another um, fairly sensible budget build. This time we're building it for a family friend and her friend. Mm -hmm. What games do you guys play? He plays a lot of like random online games. I see him on Roblox a lot. I mean, he has Genshin Impact, but it breaks his PC so he doesn't even open the game. Do you know what kind of computer he has now? I don't, but I know it's a family computer, just like how my other friends was. Everyone knows the family computer doesn't game. <laughs> so uh, his mom is actually good friends with my wife, your mom. Mm -hmm. So that's how you guys know each other. And he has been literally blowing up your phone for like the last couple weeks now saying, can you please build me a computer? So anyway, um, they didn't have a lot of money to spend. So there's some upgrades in the... Sorry for the squeaking. It's our uh, 3D printer over there. The... <laughs> the lube that I asked Nick to get was the wrong kind of lube. So I got to wait till we get the right kind of lube so that it'll stop doing that. But anyway, moving forward. Um, yeah, so like I like to do, when we're building for friends and family, I always throw in some upgrades. So I can tell you right now, this far exceeds their budget, but realistically, the price of this computer uses a couple previous gen stuff, and it's not gonna completely break the bank. So let me go over the parts real quick. She's gonna build it. I'm curious as to whether you remember anything about how to build a computer. Not really. It's been a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyway, that's why we're doing a refresher course today. <laughs> Uh, the case here, absolutely nothing special. It's a Cooler Master, Master Light 3.1 TG, Tempered Glass, Master Glass, Tempered, Tempered Glass, Master, Master, Tempered Glass, Master Box. <laughs> yeah, Cooler Master has the stupidest names in the industry and I will always make fun of them for it. They have the stupidest Master, Master, Stupid <laughs> names. Anyway, this is a uh, micro ATX case, which will match our micro ATX board. I don't know how much room they have, so I'm building a smaller computer mm -hmm. in terms of parts so that they can fit it kind of anywhere. So that's the case we're using, no, nothing special. I'll be throwing in some basic case fans to kind of max out the airflow that's in there. Um, graphics card wise, this is an EVGA GeForce RTX 2070 XC. So, or it's XC Ultra. Again, previous gen, obviously 2070 will have no problems gaming at uh, 1080p, especially you know with the games he wants to play. I don't know how demanding Genshin is. I've watched you play it on your system, but then again, you have a water-cooled 2080 Ti and you know, high-end computer, so it shouldn't have a problem. But that's our graphics card. Our CPU. I chose this one specifically because it's the counter to our previous budget build that we did where Micro Center sponsored it, where I couldn't decide between the 5600G or the 11600K. So since we did the 11600K, um, I went ahead and went with the 5600G this time around. This actually has an integrated GPU in it, so that that's nice, you know, just for troubleshooting features and such. Um, it's also brand new, unopened, you know, we haven't done tests with this particular CPU because we had another one. So this one, I opened it just to see what cooler came with it. Speaking of cooler, I am using the box cooler, although I'm using the bigger one. This is one that would come with like a 5700 or a 5800. You know, the 5900 XTs and the 5950 XTs don't come with a cooler because you're expected to use a bigger cooler with that. But the cooler that comes in here would obviously get the job done as well, but it's like half the density. <laughs> of the one we're putting in there. So a little bit better cooling on this one. There's no thermal paste on it. We've already used it. So I will be putting our own thermal paste on there, which should help it perform a little better. These box coolers from AMD have always surprised me. They're actually a lot better than you would think. And they're so much better than the Intel box coolers ever were. So I don't have a problem using it with the level of power that this CPU uses. So there's our CPU, there's our cooler. Storage, we're using a one terabyte MX500, two and a half inch SSD from Crucial, this is like my go-to SSD for budget builds, uh, if available. They just, Crucial is just so solid. Their controllers are solid, the speed is solid. It's not an ad as much as it sounds like an ad. We've just used them enough to really feel comfortable using them. For memory, we are using our T-Force Delta RGB. So this is a way more than he needs. I'll probably redo this because it's 32 gigs of RAM. Oh, I don't, I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, this is a little more sensible. This is actually uh, G-Skill Ripjaws DDR4. 
It is 3200 dims and it is a uh, CL16. So plenty fast, no RGB lighting on there. But again, if you're thinking budget build, those are some of the first pieces of accessory that have to go because RGB does increase the cost of certain components. Speaking of components, we are using the ASUS Tough Gaming B550M Plus Wi-Fi for no reason other than it's the only micro ATX board that I have in the right chipset to use this CPU and not have any features be omitted. Um, and by features, I mean like PCIe Gen 4, which we actually don't need because we have a SATA drive and a 20 series. Um, but there's some future compatibility to this board if he wants to update later to a faster CPU or even a faster GPU or M.2 storage, it's capable of doing it. So let's uh, get started building this. So we're going to do this like we typically do. We are going to basically just montage style this and then I'm going to sort of guide her along the way. And then we are going to absolutely keep our fingers crossed that we do not need to do a BIOS update on this board to make the CPU work because I cannot remember if this particular board came out before or after the 5600G. If we got this board before, then we will have to put in an older CPU and do a BIOS update. So I'm fairly certain this does not have a BIOS flashback. Nope, this board does have a BIOS flashback. Okay, well that helps. So we can always just throw in a USB and have a new BIOS flashback and just hope ASUS doesn't strike again, bricking another board with this BIOS flashback features. If it does, then this video will take longer than I expected it to be. All right, so we've got it loaded up, it worked. We did have to do a BIOS flashback, by the way. Um, we used the BIOS flashback feature built into the motherboard and it didn't bork itself. So we didn't have to change out the CPU. That's because the CPU was newer than the motherboard. Um, do me a favor, kid, go into a uh, kid, kiddo, dads. Go into settings, I'm gonna show them the settings that we're at. So one of the things that I realized, this game is locked at 60 FPS, 30 or 60. I don't know if it's because it's a console port or what, but we do have VSync turned off and show the rest of the settings. Everything's as high as they'll go. Some only go to highest, some go to high, extreme, on, on. So we are locked at 60 FPS with the GPU at 35C, only using 25% of its GPU power. So it's not a very difficult game to run, which should tell you how the family computer must have been specced if it couldn't even launch the game without crashing. So it's very smooth, obviously. You have wings. Yeah. It's like World of Fortnite the anime. Okay, so obviously he'll be able to play now. She's like some high level in this game or whatever, so she can't wait for her friend to get on so that she I'm can- I'm AR 44, almost 45. You know, someone's gonna be like, that's nothing, I'm a blah, 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 blah. And that person's yeah, probably an adult, which level. is even sadder. Okay, so in terms of temperatures, this game is not stressing anything at all. The CPU is at 54C. It's probably more CPU bound, honestly, than GPU bound. 
Um, 39C on the GPU, 36% usage. I needed you to hop off there though, because I need to do some actual temperature testing real quick so we can make sure that chassis is not gonna be too hot for the, to the card. I absolutely doubt it. It's a triple slot card. Um, the two Magla fans I put in the front are white LED to give some illumination to the case. There's a surprising amount of airflow that comes through the front considering it's a solid panel that only gets air from the bottom and a little slit at the top. Only one exhaust fan, so that's why I want to stress the GPU right now and make sure it's not getting too hot, which I, I honestly doubt it's going to. And then um, we'll be able to drop it off. So let me do some temperature testing if I can get my kid to get off the game. I don't want the camera to see what's happening next. So we're fluctuating between like 56 and 58, depending on what part of the scene that it's on. CPU is at 48, clearly. I mean, the warm air coming out of there and the fans have plenty more RPM available to it, both the cooler for the GPU as well as the case. The case fans right now are running at about 50%. So I have no concerns whatsoever about um, cooling with this. There's 59C. Dang, it sucks, we gotta get rid of it. Nope, just kidding. But anyway, this is a perfect example of how you don't need like the latest generation hardware. I mean, the motherboard and the CPU is the latest gen for AMD anyway. But the graphics card, it's a 2070 non-TI, non-super that depending on the games you wanna play is absolutely positively capable of doing it, especially at 1080p. So the panel he's using is actually a 240 hertz 1080p panel. So depending on the game he wants to play, like if he's playing Fortnite or he's playing CSGO or whatever, he'll get high FPS in those titles. No problems whatsoever for this card. And uh, you know what I can't unsee with the shape of this case now is the Jawa transport. Like put some tracks on it. It just looks like a Java transport. It's all leans forward, whatever. Anyway, so that's it. Uh, my daughter has been uh, wanting him to join them and her group of friends on PC gaming. And he's like, I can't game, I don't have a PC that'll play games. And you know, they managed to uh, be able to finally build one. And my daughter really wanted to build it. And here it is. So we're done. Take this video as a lesson that, you know, you don't need the latest bleeding edge technology to enjoy games. You truly don't. And depending on the game that you're playing, like Genshin Impact, a game that wouldn't even load on the family computer is now like the computer's yawning as it's playing the game. So some future compatibility in terms of future titles and being able to play them. You can play anything that's out today without any problems. Right now we're capping out at 62C on the GPU. I mean, it might, it might hit as high as 65, depending on the title, with CPU heat as well. But I have zero concerns about this at all. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And it's course, as course, new video later.